All right, good morning, Yvette. How you doing? Uh, yeah, good to see you, girl. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time, this Sunday school. We thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for the people that's here. Thank you for the ones who may be on their way, Lord God. We thank you for the ones who are on their way. We ask God that you continue to bless us. And we ask that you continue to lead us. It's our desire to please you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, Judy. Amen. Our lesson today is coming from this lesson number 12. Uh, today is February the 19th. A uh, subject is clothed with Christ. Clothed with Christ. What does that mean? That means to be wrapped up, covered, and have the same appearance as Jesus Christ. In other words, when people see us, I'll share with our Bible study on yesterday. When people see you, they should see Jesus. They should see his character, characteristics, his mannerism, his lifestyle. So that's our focus today. Clothed with Jesus is, means I'm wrapped up in God. God has me covered. Uh, Diana, how you doing? Mother Robinson, good to see you, girl. Amen. Praise God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Um, but to be clothed, clothed with Christ is we are now... When we, we I, I shared this yesterday, we sang the song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to let it shine. I don't know if you guys know that song. Um, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. You remember that one? Yeah, back in the sanctified church, we sang that church. Everywhere I go, and um, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, you like that? But that's how it was, because um, we work, I don't know about you guys, but I work in a very, very, um, the, I'm going to use the word corrosive atmosphere. Some, you guys call it toxic. I mean, I, I, I live in a world where people sit around and gossip and they cuss and they fuss and they complain all day, every day. That's, that's, what, that's the environment that I work in. And it's like, man, I was like, can you guys just be happy? Like, it, it's, it's, ama it's amazing. It's like, people will always find something to complain about. So why this lesson is important because people need to see what it looks like when you're clothed in Christ and show them that there is hope. And you don't have to live this way. And you don't have to, life, this is not life. That's the life you may have chosen, but, but that life is not real. I shared with the people yesterday that right now in America, 57% of our teenage girls are depressed. 29% of our teenage boys are depressed with zero hope. I mean, and I, I was looking at those, those numbers. I'm like, man, when I was a, a teenager, <laughs> uh, hopelessness was no, nowhere in my brain. We had, we, we got on our bikes, we went here, we went there. We just had to be home before the sun, but before the street lights came on, but we had life and we had these expectations. These days, these kids be like, man, if I live to be 20, I'll be blessed. I'm like, where you get this stuff from? But they, they talk like that because they watching TV and CNN and Fox and all this stuff. And they got, and, and they're just being brainwashed and to believe that there is no hope. Listen, as long as you're breathing, there is hope. As long as the blood is raining, going through your, running through your veins, tomorrow can be a better day. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Paul and Silas were in the, in the courts at midnight, cried out to God. And the Bible says, and suddenly God showed up. And I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not sure what people are watching because I don't watch TV. Um, I don't watch sports. I, I'm, I was talking to one of my colleagues at work the other day, and I was telling him I'm getting ready to go on a training uh, um, a trip. And he was like, well, yeah, bring it back a T-shirt from this, this, on, I, from, from this team. I said, well, what is that team? Is that football or baseball or basketball? He said, you know, you know, this. I'm like, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't waste time. My time is too precious. Time is too precious. And I was sharing with the people on yesterday. 
we ha if we have this many people that's hopeless, then what, what are we doing as the body of Christ to be the gospel or bring the gospel or be the light of the world? Jesus Christ said that we are the light of the world. We are the city set upon a hill. But he also said that if the salt is lost its savor, it's good for nothing. So if the church can't influence our world to have some type of hope, because I guess what? My hope is in God. There are some days, man, life is, is, is difficult, and, and that's not even an understatement. But at the end of the day, I still have God, and I can still trust God. I can still believe God, and I still know that God's going to make a way somehow. So we have to not learn it. Yes, sir, go ahead. Okay, so let's just back up now. Uh, uh, Brother Brian was saying that uh, Jesus Christ said that, that, that we're the salt of the earth. What does that actually mean? Well, salt has a few components. Back in the old days, back in the Roman days, when the Roman Empire was um, the most powerful nation, salt was very um, hard to, re to get. It was, salt was almost as, it's more expensive than gold because salt was valuable. Now, salt is a preservative. It does add flavor, but salt is a preservative, number one, and it prevents decay, rot, and everything else. So basically what salt means, what salt for, for us is we are here in this earth as the salt to prevent the corruption and the corrosion of Satan. That's our assignment. When he says you are the salt, and then the light is the revelation, the insight, the wisdom, and the understanding. So if we're salt and light, we're preventing Satan from destroying people, and then we're giving them information on how they can make their lives better in Christ. Does that make sense? All right, so that's where that term came, comes from. It does have flavor, because if, if Christians will actually get involved in their, 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 their world, because on my job that I don't like, People are now, they're affected by my presence. And so while they're cussing, fussing, and gossiping, I'm working hard, I'm smiling, I have this positive mindset, and I'm pressing forward. And they're standing there, they're, they're looking. And now I've noticed, I've been there almost a year now, I look at the other employees, and they are starting to imitate me. All right? And so the Bible says, what well, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So I notice now that while they're teaching, they teach like I teach. They stand like I stand. They move like I move. Have they gotten to the place where they're not um, cussing and gossiping? Not yet. But I, I believe it's going to happen. Now, uh, I personally, personally, I'm, I'm to the point like, well, you know, God, um, did you send me here or what? Because this is hard. It's, it's, I don't know about you, but... Um, uh, you guys, but man, it's, it's, it's hard to be around this negative, toxic, abrasive. I, I don't even like, ar I don't even argue. I don't. I'm like, you know what? You win. Goodbye. Take it. Whatever. I'm going to give you my point of view. If you don't receive it, I'm not going to sit there for an hour trying to prove my point. That's just not in my nature. But they're coming. They've come a long way. And here's what we are. When you're clothed in Christ, you are now the very image of Christ on this planet. And people need to see the power and the presence of God revealed on this planet. Right now, there's a revival going on back in the uh, south, south, mid-south or whatever, Kentucky. And man, it's awesome. There, there's been many revivals. And I've been, my teacher has been telling me that the revival is going to come because the devil just cannot keep on winning and doing what he's doing without God having a response. God responds. Revival comes. Now... The problem is in the church, there are people in the church who wants to discount the revival. And the reason why I believe it is, is because the revival did not come from their location or from their information. It came from somewhere else that they don't approve of. All right. Kentucky is not a state that that's fits into what's called the normal political mindset of the current world. 
So clothed with Christ. Our Bible basis is Colossians chapter number 3, verse 5 through 17. Bible truth, Christ is all in all. Memory verse, above all these things, put on charity. Uh, like I shared with the people yesterday, and I'm going to share with you two guys today. Charity was the highest form of showing love. All right. Uh, in our current world, charity does not mean the same thing it meant in the Bible days. These days, when somebody says you're a charity case, that's a negative connotation. In the Bible days, charity was something that was the highest form of showing love because most people in the Bible days only had barely enough to take care of today. I, I have churches. I don't have churches, but I, I fellowship with churches and I deal with churches that's in Uganda, that's in Pakistan. That's in Nigeria, Tanzania, uh, and many of these people, uh, they don't know if they're going to have water or food from day to day. That's, that's how life is. That's their normal life. It's like sometimes they just go and mix up some dirt with some water. Sometimes they have electricity. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they have internet. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they have, it's just like when we take stuff for granted. Uh, one of my students was telling me the other day that, uh, you know, life was so hard for her that she had to go and steal socks and underwear and other personal things. She's like, I know I'm sharing too much information. I was like, well, go ahead and share. Because uh, I've been doing this now for 29 years. I've heard a lot. And, and, and the, the, what, what goes on is we don't understand the, the struggle of people because we've We've either not struggled or we've forgotten our struggle and we don't or we don't appreciate the fact that people are actually suffering in this world. And many people are at their wits end and we'll sit there and say, well, they should just do this and they should do that. Well, there's a saying it's easier said than done. And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes people, when I go to talk to people, they say, well, you know what? It's easy for you to say that you got a wife. I'm thinking, yeah, it's easy for you to say that you got a husband. And they're thinking that just because you got these things that you should be okay. No, no, no. As long as we got King Jesus, somebody asked on Facebook, well, who's your go-to person when you are, how does it go, Brother Brian? When you're down now, I don't have that. I don't have that. I, I tried it. It didn't work. People was like, I did. I, I broke down on the prayer call and I tried to share. It's like, oh no, you can't. Mm -mm. Because people don't see people. They want they want you for what they can get from you most of the time. But they don't. But they don't really want to be involved in your struggle. And I say, you know what? I have a go-to person. His name is Jesus. And as long as I got Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Now I'm not saying that uh, uh, vindictively, but I know where I am. That the average person can't handle the struggle that I have to deal with on a daily basis. And then they don't even really want to hear it. <laughs> I talked to my father a few days ago. He said, oh, well, how you doing, son? I said, well, I can tell you the truth or I can tell you I'm doing okay. What do you want to hear? I said, because most people don't want to hear what you got to say. Matter of fact, we're in a world today where when you go into some adversity, many people are convinced, well, you brought it on yourself. That's the world we live in. Christ is all in all. Remember verse, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of what? We don't have the script on the screen. Perfectedness. So what God, what God is saying in the book of Colossians is that when you put on charity, which is the highest form of showing love, you are moving into, in, into the direction of being perfect. Now, if you really want to be a perfect man or in the direction of a perfect man or woman of God, show off God in all of your responses, actions, mannerisms, characteristics. That makes sense? Hey, Nicole, young soldier for Christ. Yeah, Nicole is one of our OGs. She's a triple OG, actually. Uh, I remember <laughs> we used to pick them up and we used to pack that van out. And we was, they was like, well, we're on the Nolan team. Now, now we actually have a business group called the Nolan team. And, uh, but uh, they were living in Fontana. It was like a whole bunch of them. So instead of being in street gangs, they were part of the Nolan team. So they would walk down the street. And man, I remember we had like, they had their step team. Uh, who are we, Some young soldiers for Christ? What can we, we can do all things through Christ and strength us. What can stop us? Nothing, no weapon. And, and they were just like, and they had their little step thing. I don't know if one of these days they'll come over and show you guys, but it was awesome. All right, then they break off and start singing. And uh, it, it was that. But anyway, I just saw Nicole's picture pop up. Then I was just like, oh, okay. 
All right. Good morning. Good morning, Nicole. All right. But um, our lesson name is by the end of this lesson, we will gain an impression of principles living in God. Now, an impression is something that's something that's now penetrates. Now, uh, I don't know if you guys ever walked in the mud. OK, but in Korea, they had this very thick mud that will pull the boots off, pull your boots off your feet. But, you know, when you walked, when you learn, when you turn back around, you can see your impression, your footprint. Well, what God is telling us is this. Wherever you walk, wherever you go, you should leave the footprint. So what, what, what footprint are you leaving? The footprint of God. So wherever you go, I don't care if it's the gas station or the beauty shop or the barber shop or wherever, there should be something about your persona that leaves the imprint of to people. Something's peculiar about that dude or that woman. There's something different. They are noticing now. It's not a prideful thing, but when you represent Jesus, you're going to be different. You don't. You. The Bible says we're royal, we're chosen, we're called out of darkness into His marvelous light. So when you come into the room, their atmosphere should change. Why? Because it's not you walking in the room. You're bringing. You're, you're introducing Jesus Christ. You're bringing God in the room. So when when you walk in the room, I remember back in the old days. Uh, the Church of God of Christ, uh, the founder of the Church of God of Christ was Bishop Mason. Bishop Mason did not walk in the room like they do the current days where now uh, in the current days, when when the bishop walks in, everybody they go, oh, stop, praise God. Everybody stand. The bishop is here. No, it don't matter because whenever he arrives, they just stop. Well, Bishop, back in Bishop Mason's days, they didn't do that. When Bishop Mason walked in the room, the whole atmosphere shifted. Because they felt a different presence. He didn't say one word. There were no armor bearers. Uh, it, it was a, no entourage. He just walked in the room. And because he stayed in prayer and focused all the time. When he came in the room and started walking down the aisles. Whichever aisle he came down. People felt his presence. There are people that go to his, He has a, uh, a, a grave site down in Tennessee. There are people that says. I would just walk by the grave site and I was instantly healed. How did it happen? Because of the connection with God. And so the footprint, our footprint is this. I don't care what kind of environment you work in. I work in a very toxic environment. But the, the environment is changing. I, I'm seeing the body language and the words changing. Is it, is it happening as fast as I wanted it to happen? <laughs> no, it's not. But guess what? I'm, I'm, I'm looking and every now and then God will just send me these triggers and these encouraging, encouraging words and indications that keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, just keep on, keep on. Because Victor Nolan is like, I don't have to deal with this. But God, God so, and I don't know why God sent me there, but guess what? I'm starting to see the, and, and they're starting, they're slowly coming and they're, they're, they're like, when there's a break or they're not doing anything, they'll start coming to talk to, talk to me. And guess what? Now I get to share who I am. I'm a child of God. These folk hate Christians. I mean, I don't know how we got to the place in America where folk just hate God and hate Christianity. I don't, I don't understand it. But they don't. But guess what? They're seeing a different image of Christ because I am leaving that image. Christ image, how? Because we follow Christ. Because guess what? I follow Christ. And if you follow Christ... Wherever you go, you're going to leave the residue. Somebody said a residue. You're going to leave the residue of Christ wherever you go. You're going to leave that imprint upon them wherever you go. He it says, it says, watch this now. Our life's principles and behaviors are what? Different. Is, is that what it says in your book? It's, we're still on the lesson eight. But our lifestyle. Hey, um, uh, uh, Uncle Jonas. Our lifestyle is, is we, we, we supposed to be different. Listen, I'm going to share this with you guys. Don't feel bad because you're different. I go through that. I'm just going to be real honest with you guys and transparent. I am. I do not fit in. I, at all. And my wife was like, you need to try to, to fit in with the conversations. You need to try to do this. And, and, and because, you know, because in the world we live in today, people attack the person that's different than they are. 
So you're different. We got to get rid of you. We don't, we don't understand you. So now you're, no, I'm different. Here's the thing. You're different. I'm different. Can we all just be different and just be different and still love, appreciate, and be professional with each other? Right? I can't hear you. Well, you know, and I'm, I'm going to share this with you because people say, well, I'm controlling. I'm not controlling. I'm just saying I'm giving. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I'm not going to deviate from what the word of God says. So that's, that, that means I'm controlling. No. All I'm going to say, if, if God says it's black and white, to me, it's black and white. So I'm not trying to control your life. The Bible says, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if your mind only knows one way, well, guess what? I, just because that's the only thing, only thing your mind knows, I'm not going to stand back and say, well, well, that's the way you see it. It's okay. No, the Bible has a direction. And if your direction is going away from God, I can't just sit back and pat you on the back and say, all right, bro, all right, sis, it's all right. That's your interpretation. That's your truth. No, there is only one truth, and God is truth. God's word, God's word is truth. Make sense? And we have to get to that place, but I'm going to tell you this. In the world that we live in, your behavior has to be different. And the reason we, we, we have people in church now trying to be cool and hip and in tune. And they just like want to, it's like whatever's going on in the world, they're trying to capitulate and get, in, get involved. And I want you to like me. No, Jesus says, they hated me, they're going to hate you. That's what Jesus said. And guess what they did with Jesus? They beat him and they crucified him. So don't think they're going to be giving you the keys to the city and patting you on the back. Don't even think about that. Because it's not going to happen. I was coming to church this morning. I got, the police saw me. They, they, they pumped it. They turned around. Then they called back up. And they trailed me all the way until I got to the church. Amen. I go through this every week. I'm like, and I remember one time they pulled the right in, right, right, those doors right there. They pulled up with guns on me right in front of that door. Right? They did. It's like, it's like. Well, that car looks like a drug dealer's car. I'm like, well, drug dealers are not the only people that make money. Well, it's okay. Well, I said, well, it's not okay because the people that was in the car with me, you traumatized them. I'm used to guns. I've been having so many guns in my head. But the people that was in the car with me, they never came back to church. Ever. And because they, because they, the folk just sit there and looked at it. Anyway, let me move forward because uh, uh, there's just so much. And sometimes... I don't know about you guys. I think I'm going to get me a, a, a heavy bag because <laughs> I can't share what's going on in my life with people because people are like, well, you ain't supposed to be going through that. You're a bishop. I said, okay. I don't know where you got that from in your book, but everybody I know in the Bible went through something. Amen. The Bible says, follow Christ's principles and behaviors are different from the rest of society. And it, it, this, is what, this is what the Bible says, evaluate our treatment of others. This is what we need to start doing right now. We need to learn how, we need to really look at, take an honest assessment on how we are engaging in this world that we're living in. We're in this world. I know we're not of this world, but we're here. And we're here to make a difference. And no, no matter where you are, and look again, I don't like where I work, but guess what? No matter where you are, you're there to make a difference. And watch this now. I'm, God, is, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, on, on um, Friday, man, I just woke up with the power and the presence of God was so mightily. And God was saying, he was just like, Victor, you don't like it, but I put you there for you and for them. I want you guys to catch this now because many times we do a lot of things because we're trying to get something for ourselves. But listen, the way God works is, his principle is this, give and it shall be given. That's his principle. So if you're trying to get something from God, give something from God to other folk. Because if God blessed you with something, be a blessing. Amen. I'll share this with you, gonna move forward. But whenever whenever I loan people money, I don't charge any interest. If if it's seven thousand dollars, you give me seven thousand dollars back where you can. I'm not gonna be calling you, I'm not gonna be texting you, I'm not gonna be, hey, where my money? No, I ain't doing all that. Hey, Jesse, girl, good to see you. Hey man, Jesse is one of my 
uh, well, my, 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 one of my, well, actually, he's not one of my, Slick Rick was my absolute best friend on this planet. So um, he's no longer here with us, but um, thank God, Jesse, Jesse is his daughter. She's on watching right now. Thank God for her. But listen, saints, we need to evaluate our treatment of others and, and then watch this now, make changes when necessary. And here's what that means. If you if you start if you pay attention to how you're treating people and they're not receiving the presence of God, I want you to cast guys to cast this now. It, it doesn't matter whether they like you or not. But if they're not receiving the presence of God or having a hunger and a thirst for God, you need to change the way you are acting around these people because you're not presenting Jesus. Because any any time Jesus is presented, folk want him. Amen. The only people that did not want Jesus Christ was religious people, which were Pharisees. Evaluate our treatment of others and make changes where necessary and, um, and, and, and as demanded by a life lived in Christ. I don't know if you guys know, uh, I'm going to tell you this, for over this last year, two years, man, I've changed a lot. Um, I, I, was just, I, was, I was looking at it this morning because... Back in my younger days, I didn't believe that man's supposed to cry. Matter of fact, when, when my, my uh, mother or father used to beat me up when I was a kid, I, I just stared there. I just stood there. I never cried, never made a sound. Because I, I had, it in this, I had this, this mindset that man ain't supposed to cry. And I, had, I carried that all the way until two years ago. Now I cry every week. I was crying this morning. But here's the thing. It, it, you learn how to, you change. Because I don't know about you guys, the Bible said that Jesus wept. And Jesus was weeping because he's looking at the condition of his friends and the world that he's living in. That he's living in. And it's like, it's heartbreaking. I don't know about you guys, but it's okay to show emotion. I know I was trained the wrong way because I ain't never seen no man cry, ever. I ain't never seen no man. And I'm, I know my great grandfather, my grandfather, my father. I ain't never seen not, not one of them cry nowhere at nothing. Nothing. I don't care if it's a funeral, murder, it don't matter. At church, I had never saw it. And so um, my brain was like, but I'm going to tell you, the Bible says you, you should weep with those that weep. Right? So if we have a population where 57% of our teenage girls and 29% of our teenage boys have zero hope to the point that they want to commit suicide, that's not a happy time. That, what's something, what's, what, what, are this, what are we doing in church? What are we doing in our world? That's my mindset. What? Where are, these, where are the parents? I ain't bragging, but I have seven children. Not, 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 not one of them is thinking about that. They all have some type of hope and positivity. Do they all have the Holy Ghost? Not yet, but one day they will. But they have the word of God. Amen. I'll, all right, listen, this is our, our scripture. Colossians chapter number three, verse number five. This is what it says, the first verse. It says, mortify therefore the members which are upon the earth. What does it mean to mortify? Mortify means to kill, destroy, get rid of. Don't do this anymore. That means you and I, we have to make a conscious decision. That says, you know what? I'm a child of God. I am not going to do this. Amen. Uh, I'm going to tell you this, guys. My, my flesh works just like yours. I'm not, amen. I'm, I'm, I'm not floating above the world uh, like Mother Teresa uh, of somebody. No, I get angry. I get frustrated. I get tired. Uh, I get, that happens. But at the, in, in, in the middle of the night when the devil's trying to t put things in my mind, the Bible says, cast down every thought and imagination that would exalt itself against God. I began to just go into praise and worship and said, no, devil, you're a liar. No, this is what's going to happen. No, that's not going to do that. Uh, my, my remote control works like yours. I can scroll and look at pornography. I can scroll and look at all kinds of stuff. But I can make a choice. And say, no, no, that's because and it don't, no, there's nobody looking at me. All right, my phone is a secure phone. Can't nobody open this but me because it's a business phone, all right? And I have people's 
private business on this phone. My, my wife can't even access this phone. All right, same thing with my tablet. My, I use my tablet for work. But guess what? I can hide if I wanted to, but guess what? At the end of the day, I still have to have my mind knowing that God is omniscient, all-knowing. I'm the present. He sees everything I do. So whether you see me, so when you see me at church, I, it doesn't even matter. I may have the best persona or the worst. It doesn't matter how you see me, really, because I need to start showing you Christ. And then I, I need to get to a place in my life when, when they see you, Victor, they see Jesus. And then watch this now. Be honest with your presentation. All right. I can honestly say that, man, now I am I I've learned how to love people. I, I didn't know how to do that before. Uh, and then uh, I'm, not, I'm I'm long. I have a lot of work to do, but I'm, I, I know how to show love now. I, I, I have never I never saw that. I never saw a man show love. I, I, that was not the world I grew up in. I, there's nobody ever put their hand on my shoulder put their hand on my head and said, Victor, I love you, man. I, I, I never, my, my entire life, I've been on this planet for many decades. And most of my life, that was not normal in my world. You know where I got that from? When I got beat up by the police and I went and I joined the gang and every time they saw me, I love you, man. That's the only time. Church, I never got it. Home never got it. But I don't care what they were doing in the when I walked up in the park, they could be in the middle of uh, drinking their court, 40 ounces or whatever, playing dominoes or playing football. They will stop. What's up? How you doing? Love you, man. And I was excited. <laughs> I'm serious. I was like, and I was excited, it's like, okay, I will come home from school, change clothes, and, and, and be, be, be almost running down to get to a place where folk love me. Listen, mortify your members which are upon the earth. Let me share this with you guys. If we learn how to deny ourselves and mortify ourselves, we can be better and more efficient and more effective on dealing with this world. Because what's missing in this world is we're, we, we have more judgment then love, Lord Jesus. Uh, um, I was talking to a, a sister the other day. She's like, you know, I'm tired of going to places where I'm being judged. When people are just looking at me with these eyes of condemnation. I'm not, I don't measure up. I'm not good enough. And look, like, look, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ proved his love for us while we were yet sinners. While we had nothing to offer, he died for us. And the Bible says there's no greater love than this than a man lay down his life for his friends. But all we want to do is sit there and pick people apart where you're doing this wrong and you're doing that wrong and you're not doing that right and you're not saying this right and I don't like your behavior and I don't like your tone. Listen, saints, all of us are on this journey, on this planet, in this world, trying our best to get to heaven. Now, is everybody on your level to be where they can do it the way you do it? Maybe not, but guess what? It's not your job to beat them up because they're not where you are. It's your assignment to demonstrate to them how to get to where you are. Does that make sense? So mortify your members which are upon the earth. And then it tells you fornication. Fornication is not approved by God. Now, I know in our world today, they say, well, love is love. And you can love whom you, whom you want. And it's okay. As long as you love each other, it's okay. No, it's not. Fornication is sexual relationships outside of a marriage covenant. Period. Uncleanliness, in, 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 inordinate affections, same things. God did not authorize it. It's not approved. I don't care how much you like that man and you're a man. That's inordinate. God does not approve. I don't care how much you like that woman and how much she, how good she makes you feel. It's not about your sexuality or feelings. It's about, it's about following after what God says, period. It says, uncleanness, inordinate affections, evil concupiscence. Oh, this word always messed me up. But it's this collusion. This is this mindset where you just kind of join it in. And we live in a world today where folk are just sitting up there saying, well, you know, we, we need to learn how to be a little bit more tolerant and more patient and more loving. Listen, I'm going to share this with you, brothers and sisters. Don't put love in that equation. Because the Bible says that God chastises everybody he loves. God's not going to just sit there and watch you do. I love all of my children. 
And all of them know I love them. They know that, I mean, they know this beyond a shadow of a doubt, but guess what? You're not going to sit there and do wrong in my presence and not be checked. I'm going to check your behind. Can I get a witness up in here? Amen. My wife is in the office. But she, my, uh, if my kids were here, they'll tell you that. No, I don't, homie, I, no, I had zero, no, stop. And when I say stop, I mean stop not, not when you feel like it. When I say stop, I, that means stop now. And then don't ask me no questions. You know what the heck you're doing. Don't do it anymore. Amen. When I was a kid, if we said something wrong or did something wrong, the adults would say, hey. Amen. Matter of fact, it's funny because when I was a kid, we couldn't even call anybody a liar. You remember that? We couldn't, we couldn't do that, right? Oh, they telling the story. <laughs> Amen. Because I remember one time my brother Billy and my, uh, my cousin Gary or Dexter, one of them, they're, they're probably watching. I know Gary's watching. Uh, they were out there because we, we used to be down. The, our big pastime back in the days is, I don't know if you guys ever sifted sand, but I know that's, that's a, a, a southern thing. But we would be out there and we would just go out there and be sifting sand. And what did you did? What we did was you would, you would just take this sand, you keep sifting it until you got the finest sand, and then we'd make these little piles. That was our pastime as kids. And anyway, one day while we were sifting sand, uh, my brother Billy and one of my other cousins, I don't know if it was Dexter or uh, Gary, they got into a, this big fight. And my grandfather was sitting on the porch. And then one of them says, you a lie. And the other cousin said, other one said, you a lie. And my granddaddy woke up and said, boys, y'all come here now. Because my grandpa, I never seen my grandfather raise his voice ever. He, boys, y'all, y'all come here now. That's probably where I get it because my mom, every, all my, all my family members, if you ever go to my family, family reunion, we all act the same. We, we don't just, we don't get frazzled on or what the, come here, boys. My grandfather was just a few inches taller than my mom was like this tall. My grandfather was maybe here. But my grandfather called them up to the back porch. And he picked them up one at a time by their foot. Upside down. And began to beat their behind. While they were suspended in the air. This is my grandfather. Who has already worked 30 years and retired. He beat them behind. He dropped this one. Grabbed them. So come here. Picked them up. Beat them behind. Went and dropped them. And what, guess what? When they came back down and started playing back again, they learned how to play together without going off. God will, do, God will beat your behind. Okay, I need, I, I, and I need the saints to get, but listen, let me share this with you guys. We should not be beating people. We should be leading people. Are you hear what I'm saying? And one of the problems I believe that, that, in my personal opinion, that goes on in church is we are in the position of God where we want to do the vengeance and the beating. No, God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Let it go. Stop fighting. Turn the other cheek. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. I'm telling you this. It is not easy because many days when I'm at my job, I want to just say something. Sometimes in the middle of the night, Sister Alexander, I'll sit there and, and, and have it in my brain. Just when they say this, I, I got the comeback. Because I know I'm right. Can I get a witness up in here? I'm serious. Sometimes I wake up 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I'm just, just, just go ahead and say it. If you be honest with yourself, you do the same thing. Stop doing that. Lift up, your, I'm telling you guys in the name of the Holy Ghost, lift up the word of Jesus and sing a song. Stop tripping. Y'all remember that word, that term? We used to say that back in the days. You, girl, you tripping. Man, bruh, 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 bruh. You tripping, dude. All right, and so the devil, the de and, and I don't know who invented that term, but does anybody know what it means to be tripping? That means you're stumbling and getting ready to fall. Right? Because you're going to hurt yourself. You can't hurt people that don't like you. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm laughing from pain and revelation. 
You can't get back. You can't retaliate. It don't affect them. They don't like you. Stop. You ain't got nothing to prove and you have nothing to gain. Mortify your members. Kill that desire. Let go. Come on and say, let God. Covetousness. Oh, Lord Jesus. Um, I, I work in an environment where people, they look at me. They see my car and they see how I dress and carry myself. And one of, the, one of my, uh, my boss actually came up to me one day and said, man, I wish I was you. I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. You're looking at the way I dress and the car I drive. I said, but you don't know what hell I go through just to get up every day and put this smile on my face and come here and be a professional. And a lot of times we're looking at people and we don't realize what they're going through just to get to you. I said, no, you don't. No, you don't. I, I, I'm, I'm so thankful. I, I know people fought me for this, but I'm so thankful that none of my children do what I do. Amen. They all are good kids. I love them to death. They love me and they love God. But I would not wish this assignment on my worst enemy. Because folk are cruel. They, it's, it's where you are. But it says, but covet says, which is, this is what the Bible says, which is what? Idolatry. What is idolatry? It's having another God besides the true and the living God. And so here's what happens in life. And, and when people, we can make idols out of people. Now, I don't, I'm not one of those kind of people. I remember one of my aunties came out here uh, for a family reunion. And there was this, this uh, famous guy. I think it was either Lou Gossett or Lou, or Lou something. My auntie, who was like, she's kind of laid back like I am. All of a sudden, she dropped her, her suitcase and ran over there and said, Hey, can I take a picture with you? The heck is wrong with my auntie? She was so excited about having that picture with that celebrity. I'm like, what if the people in the body of Christ had that excitement about the presence of God? Hey, it's Sunday morning. I'm going to go see Jesus. I remember that when I was a kid. I don't know if you guys remember, but I remember when the saints would fly up in the parking lot, almost burning rubber, and we had gravel and dirt. Dirt. We didn't have like the parking lot we had, like we have out there. What the lines? No, cars were parked every which way. That's how we said in Alabama. Every which way, because they would just run up in there, park, throw that, that car in park. Because I listen, I saw this because I was a criminal. I didn't go to church. I went to church, but I didn't go inside. So I'm outside looking at these folk, man, and looking at, and they were, they have the biggest smile and expectation. And see, back in those days, you can hear the church going on from outside. Right? And they're like, ooh, ooh. And I would see them putting their shoes, ooh, I got to get in there. Come on, come on, come on, close that door. Close. Let's go, let's go. They were excited about being in the presence of God. Amen. Today we'd be like, we'll pull up and say, can't hide. Get along. Ooh. And we pull up and we stop for and we exhale for a second. We calmly close our door. And then we walk slowly to the church. Right? No, they would come in, jump in, and shout. Now and now listen uh, as we get ready to wrap this up. We really need to get to the place where is is participation. Participation. And not just visual stimulation. Everybody should be clapping their hands. Everybody should be singing, making a joyful noise, whether you got a microphone or not. It's not the time to sit around and look at the praise team. Listen, saints, we're in the world where everybody in the body of Christ needs to be on the same page. Yes, ma'am. No, no, that's not the same thing. You inspire me. Especially like when you just let go and let God, you inspire me. 
When Sister Nola sings and gives it all, she inspires me. Brother Ray, I see his veins popping in his neck. That inspires me. Brother Brian, sometimes he sings with us, right? When I hear in his voice that he's given his best effort, that inspires me. What inspires me is when people give God their best. Amen. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share this with you guys. I am not. Uh, I, 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 it's, it, what discourages me really is when people just do lackadaisical. Okay. I, I can't. I, I cannot stand that. Because I really believe that if you're going to give God anything, you should give him everything. All. Give God your all. Because guess what? He gave you his all. He gave you his blood, his life. And he says, this, your reasonable service is to present your body a living sacrifice. God don't want you to die. God wants you to live, but show him off. Amen. God's not looking for, he don't want you to go out there and take a bullet and dive on, just fall on your sword. Saul did that in the Old Testament. That's not, that, that was his decision. No, God wants you to go forth and sh let your light so shine so that people can see. But if we, we got to move, uh, move this stuff out. Yes, sir. Go to the next verse while you get ready to say your question. What happened? Yeah, all the apostles died a horrible death except for John. John the Baptist was, was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. But every apostle was either crucified, cut in half, fed to the lions. They were, that, that, that did happen. But that was not God's design and that was not their choice. It was the evil culture. Like right now, the culture in America is anti-Christ. They can talk about everything else on your job and in public, but don't talk about Jesus. All right. I have the pastor, the pastor, one of the pastors I listen to, he's a pastor of Chino, no, Calvary Chapel in, um, where's, where's TBN at? Santa Ana. He's, a, he's, he's one of the pastors down there. Well, it's Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa is actually where his church is. And so the city council invited him to come to do the prayer. Now, I do the prayer, what, about four times a year for, for Fontana, four times a year for Rialto. Is it four times or two times, Nolan? About four times? Three. Okay, so here's the thing. In his city, they say that you can come pray for the city, but you can't mention Jesus. And he says, well, if I can't bring Jesus, then I can't come. <laughs> right? Every time I go to pray, whether it's Rialto or Fontana, I say in the name of Jesus. Because if you can't handle his name, then you don't need me. Because I am who I am because of him. Does, does that make sense? And so we'll sit there capitulating and we will just say, no, well, I, at least I got a chance. To, no, you didn't. Because you have to go through Jesus to get to God. So if you don't go through Jesus, all you did was give a speech. You didn't have a prayer. Yes, sir. I know that. But when you come and tell me I can't say his name, then we got problems. But yeah, I can say he's the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace. He's the king of kings, the Lord of God, Lord of lords, the Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Salom. I can, do, I can do all that stuff. Yes, sir. They say, okay, you can't say Jesus, but I can say Yeshua. Yeah, yeah, you could say Yeshua. But I'm not, here's the thing, Brother Ray, and I appreciate that. Because Yeshua and Jesus is the same name. Right, you can say Yahweh or Jehovah. Elohim, exactly. You can do that. Right, exactly. And that's what we do. How you doing, Pastor? For which things sakes the wrath, this is what the Bible says, for which things sakes the wrath of God coming upon whom? The children of disobedience. That means people are not following after the Spirit of God. God's wrath comes. Amen. Most days in our house, it was nice and peaceful. Why? Because the kids knew the expectations and they followed them. Every now and then, they made a decision to do things their way. Somebody said consequences. Every now and then, they would. I was like, well, you know, I remember coming home a few days. Or, no, most of the times, I, I came home as late as I could. <laughs> and my wife would do the same thing. I was like, are you home? No. Okay, cool. I'm going to take the long way home. But sometimes I was like, you know what? Somebody got to go home. Not, 
<laughs> I get there, man, the windows are open, and they're just jamming Snoop Dogg and everything. I'm like, what the, what the, what? Do you know where you live? And one of my kids had the audacity to say, well, this is my stereo. I said, oh, okay, where's your stereo at? Pulled the plug out that thing, stepped it up, wrapped it up, put it in my closet. When you learn how to listen to the music that I authorize, you get it back. Until the end, you can get your stereo when you've grown and gone. They did the same thing with the TV. One time I had, I had three TVs, two stereos, and somebody's door in my, my closet. Because one of my kids had the audacity to slam the door. No, I'm serious, in my house. And we have, you guys, I don't know if you guys have been over my house, but there's like 15 stairs to get to the top. To the top. This child stumped on every single stair. Oh, Lord, yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And went and slammed. And, and I, listen, I was able to absorb the energy of the stump. But when you slam that door, one of my other my sons did that. I, he, and not only did he slam the door, but he leaned on the door because so, he knew I was coming. <laughs> So I went to open the door. He was like, he was like I, man, I, I, I pushed it because I'm, I'm stronger than I look. I pushed that door, but he flew across the room. I said, don't you ever in your life. But this other child, I didn't say not one word. I just went and got my little screwdriver, took the little pins out. I said, when you learn how to door, close the door properly, you'll get it back. Guess what she did? Somebody said, what? She went and got a sheet out of the pantry or whatever they would call it, the linen closet. Put it up there. <laughs> so, and I was like, wow, I love that. That's all right. That's tenacity. Guess what? So I walked up and just when, when my child sees me coming upstairs, she opens up the sheet, slams it. So good for you. But that sheet is all you got. Amen. <laughs> now, if it was a son, the sheet wouldn't have been tolerated. Right? She was coming from, from a child, adolescent. You know what? Some privacy. Fine. But fine. You ain't getting no door. Take that sheet. I, I'll let you have that. And God, what's this now? God will discipline you, but God also understands you. God is not going to beat you so bad. The Bible says, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. The Bible teaches that, right? So, I'm a, I don't know about you guys, but what I learned that works best is instant consequences for actions. I don't do mama whoopings. Anybody know what a mama whooping is? Yes, sir. Pastor knows. That, that means they're, they're whooping you. And you're, they, they, they got this like list. And you did this and you did this and you did that. Don't, don't let stuff build up wait to, until you respond. Respond instantly. Be instant in season and out of season. That's too much. Because now you're angry beating your child. Listen, now you're angry beating your child, but you're not giving them a course correction. I know, I know you guys think that we black and we've been, we've been trained to believe that works. But, but, but I'm going to tell you, trust me. And I, well, we're beyond that now because everybody got grandkids now. But when they mess up, address it. Don't let stuff build up. Because when stuff builds up, I don't know about you guys, I get just as angry as you do. Amen. And when you get angry, you're going to do some things you should not be doing. <clears throat> yes, sir. Like, what you beat me for? Exactly. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Amen. And, I, I'm, and again, I know a lot of times when I'm, I'm putting out a bunch of information, you guys may look at me like he don't know what the heck he's talking about. I deal in this world on a daily basis. Children's services, the police department, fire department, and just people. 
And plus, I have my own experience. I got beat too. And, and here's the thing. Beatings, I know we can't use that word. Beatings may be necessary, but you got to explain why you're doing it. Don't just go, there's just all this phone. <laughs> no, no. Mama whoop is okay, but don't stir up the whoopings is, my, my, is what I'm saying. Because as daddy whoopings, daddies normally whoop in silence. I don't know if you guys ever remember, but your daddy never said a word like while he was beating you behind. Uh, right? Your mama talked, your daddy didn't. But daddy took it for granted that you knew why you were getting this whooping. And you did. Amen. Amen. All right, I don't know how I got it on this subject because that's a painful subject for me. I had four whoopings in my life. I remember all four of them. Some of y'all had 30 and can't remember none. Mine were significant. Amen. My father made sure that <laughs> when I got that beating, it was going to be a memorial occasion. Woo, Lord Jesus. I was telling the people about it yesterday. I remember I ate over some white people's house. My father went and cut the fan belt off the car. And that, that it was just, I, I, I never felt nothing more painful in my life. The fan belt, I thought the, uh, the razor strap was bad, Sister Barbara. I mean, uh, Sister Carolyn. I thought the razor strap was bad. That fan belt? That thing, that, that, that thing feel like it just cut all the way to the bone. Woo! Right in the kitchen down on California Avenue in Linwood, California. <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but man, Lord Jesus, I thought I, thought I was going to die every hit. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm about to die. He going to kill me. I couldn't cry. I was like, I'm, but I'm going to die. I'm like, whatever. like... Uh, verse number seven, the Bible says, um, in which you also walk in some time as you lived in them. And God is saying, God is telling us this because before we get too, 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 too sanctimonious, all of us have made some mistakes. We all came from somewhere. If folks start digging up in your history, hmm. All right. So stop tripping. When folk are going through their, their struggles, amen, continue to pray for them, continue to be sought in light, but don't beat them down. All right. Be, be, this is what the Bible says, but now, therefore, now also put off these anger with wrath and malice and blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. The Bible says don't do this. And, and I shared it with the people at my job. It's like, well, Victor, you don't use profanity and you don't do this. I said, my God tells me I can't. I, I, so I'm going to be real honest with you guys. I got three minutes left. I'm actually over time. But I still know how to cuss. Y'all look at him in that tone of voice. No, I'm, I'm serious. I, I know how to cuss your behind out and use all of the words fluently and in context. With the venom and anger to go along with it. But I choose not. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, but thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because sometimes, uh, you guys, I look at people like, Bro, you just don't realize the can of worms you're trying. <laughs> no, no, no. No, we, we're not going there. All right, the Bible says, verse number nine, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds. Stop lying to each other. And let me show you something, saints. Learn how to be honest and say you're having a rough day. I know fake. And one of, one of the brothers I was talking to recently was like, well, I don't want to be on a, you, you, you were like crying. I said, yeah, I thought your guys was my brothers, <laughs> right? I thought I was in a safe place to, to cry. So I said, well, guess what? I said, well, I, I'm going to keep on crying. I just won't cry around you no more. <laughs> Amen. Because I ain't going to stop crying. I, I thank God for the gift of tears. It took me a long time to discover that gift. I thank God for that. Verse number 10. And have put on a new man which is renewed in the knowledge of the image of him that created him. Jesus Christ cried. Guess what? He's my leader. He's my God. If Jesus can cry, so could I. Verse number 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or sectarian, bond nor free, but in Christ is all and in all. What God is saying in this scripture is we're all his people. Whether you're circumcised or not, Greek or not, Jew or not, God ain't putting, we put that stuff on each other. 
Racism is of the devil, it's not from God. All this separation, and I think I'm better than you did. No, we are all, God looks at us, but in Christ, all and in all. We, when God looks down, he sees a black man, a brown man, a yellow man. Yeah, he does, but what he does, I see a man. And folk want to talk about what, all the, the advances we made in America. We ain't made no advances until we put the titles off the people's name. Just say a man accomplished it. Well, a black man did this and a white man did. We ain't arrived until we moved to the point where it's just a man. It's a man. It's a woman. That's so funny. I'm moving forward. I got so many verses here. And I'm way out of time. Um, verse number 12, it says, Put on therefore the elect, as the elect, the, the, the God of the holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. Oh, Lord Jesus. What, what would happen if the church got some mercy? And then kindness. What would happen if we started having some kindness and a humbleness? Oh, a mind, meekness, long suffering. People can't tolerate anything these days. Folk got so agitated yesterday at Bible college, they just got up and walked out. The Bible says one of the, one of the fruit of the spirit is long suffering. Listen, a lot of things I don't like either. <laughs> Well, you don't, it don't look like it phase you. It does phase me. But the Bible says that you're supposed to learn how the, those that are spiritual ought to restore such a one with a spirit of considering yourself. One of these days, you're going to get to a place where you'll need somebody to have some patience with you. You better start sowing that seed. Put on the elect for sakes, long suffering, forbearing. This is what it says, 13th verse, and I'm done. You can you guys read the next the rest of those verses at your leisure. The Bible says, forbearing one another. Even when you're frustrated with them, you can't stand them, don't even feel like dealing with them anymore. Forbearing one another. And then it says, and forgiving one another. Amen. The, a few days ago, I think I shared with you guys what my father told me about my nickname. And so I shared with the, our Bible study on yesterday. It's like, yeah, you got to forgive your dad. I said, I forgave my dad the same day. The pain is still there. It's going to take a while for that pain to go away. But uh, the forgiveness was like, oh, okay. The forgiveness was instant. I didn't go to bed with, with unforgiveness. Now, I'm going to share this with you guys, saints. Just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean the pain just disappears. Okay, it, there's no like, it's all gone, it's all good. Now, no, that, I, that's, I, I still struggle with that. I'm like, what? But guess what? Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. This is what the Bible says. And if, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, I think I mentioned to the brothers on the prayer line the other day. I was like, God told me, uh, Victor Nolan, Bishop Nolan, Pastor, whatever you want to call yourself. If you don't learn how to forgive, you will not be forgiven. I don't know, you guys remember that? That's what God, he just, God just like, you can't just do that. I forgave you, you got to forgive. Clothe in Christ, a clothe with Christ. I, I not, listen, saints, I'm not discounting how badly people treat you. I'm like, there's no pass. Uh, what you need to do is you need to limit your lim limit their access to you. Set some boundaries. Amen. I learned how to get in my car or walk out the room. Later, Gator. My, matter, matter of fact, my daughter that my, one of my daughters uses that term right now. Later, Gator. Amen. Just because somebody's your family member don't mean you need to stand in the room and take that crap. Learn how to bless them with your absence. <laughs> May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys pray for me. I'm praying for you guys. I do love you guys intently, intensely um, and on purpose and with a purpose and for a purpose. And we just have to learn how to love each other and understand, saints, we're all in this world trying our best to do our best for God. And where we're lacking or struggling or missing, that's what we come in as the body of Christ. Because the Bible says love covers a multitude of faults. So guess what? If you see your brother, your sister have holes or lacking in air, come and fill that space in. 
fill that space in. I know that's not normal in the black community because we, we are taught to point out stuff. But God just revealed in my spirit a few days ago, it's like sometimes black people are like sharks in the water. When they smell blood or pain, they start circling to attack instead of being like a dolphin that will come and try to save and heal. Amen. We need to move into that spirit, saints. Amen. Clothed in Christ. Father God, I thank you for the Sunday school. Thank you for so many people. The people that's here today, I thank you for the presence. Lord, I thank you so much that Pastor and First Lady made it for their safe arrival here today. And Lord God, as we move into the remainder of our service, let your power and your anointing be upon us to do your will, your will only. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. All right, be blessed, saints.